But there, there are a lot of negative things in the world. There's a lot of terrible things that are happening all over the world, all the time. Uh, there are lots of problems that need to get solved. There's lots of things that are, yeah, that are miserable and kind of get you down. But that life cannot just be about solving one miserable problem after another. Can't, that can't be the only thing. There need, to be, there need to be things that inspire you, that make you glad to, be, to wake up in the morning and be part of humanity. So when I was young, I, I, uh, I didn't really know what I was going to do uh, when, I, when I got older. Um, people kept asking me, and, but then eventually I thought that the idea of inventing things would be, would be really cool. And the reason I thought that was because I, I read a quote from Arthur C. Clarke which said that sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. And that's really true. If you go back, say, 300 years, the things that we take for granted today, you'd be burned at the stake for. Um, you know, being able to fly, that's crazy. Being able to see over long distances, being able to communicate, um, and having access to all the world's information uh, instantly from almost anywhere on the earth. Um, this is this is stuff that, that really would be magic, that would be considered magic um, in, in times past. In fact, I think it actually goes beyond that because there are many things that we take for granted today that weren't even imagined in, in times past. They weren't even in the realm of magic. So it actually goes, goes beyond that. So I thought, well, you know, if, if, if I can do some of those things, if I can advance technology, then that, that's like magic and that would be really cool. Um, and I always had sort of a slight existential crisis because I was trying to figure out wh what does it all mean, like what's the purpose of things. And I came to the conclusion that if we can advance the knowledge of the world, if we can do things that expand the scope and, and scale of consciousness, then we're better able to ask the right questions and become more enlightened and, and that's really the only way forward. So, so I think that there's certain things that are necessary to ensure that the future is good. Um, and uh, some of those things are in the long term having long term sustainable transport and sustainable energy generation um, and uh, to be a space bearing civilization and for humanity to be out there among the stars and be a multi-planetary uh, species. The part that I find personally most motivating is that it creates a sense of adventure and it makes people excited about the future. Um, now if you consider two futures, one where uh, we are forever confined to Earth or another future where we are out there on many planets, maybe even going beyond the solar system, um, I think that second version is incredibly exciting and inspiring and there need to be reasons to get up in the morning. I think certainly uh, being focused on something that you're confident will have high value to someone else um, and just being really rigorous in making that assessment um, mm -hmm. because people are, tend, tend to, a natural human tendency is wishful thinking. Um, mm -hmm. So a, a challenge for entrepreneurs is to say, well, what's the difference between really believing in your ideals and sticking, sticking to them versus pursuing some unrealistic dream that right. doesn't actually have merit? And it's, it's, that, is a, it, that is a really difficult thing to, to tell you. Can you tell the difference between those two things? Right. You know? So you need to be sort of very rigorous um, in, in your self-analysis. Uh, self um, I think certainly extremely tenacious uh, and, um, and then just work like hell. I mean, you just have to put in you know, 80, hour, 80 to 100 hour weeks every week. But the, all those things improve the odds of success. Okay. When my brother and I were starting our first company, uh, in, instead of getting an apartment, we just rented a, a small office and we slept on the couch. Uh, and we, we showered at the, the YMCA and uh, we're, we're so hot up we had just one computer. So the, 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 the website was up during the day uh, and I was coding at night. Seven days a week, all the time. Um, and I, I uh, sort of briefly had a girlfriend in that period and in order to be with me, she has to sleep in the office. So, uh, work hard, like, it, it, I mean, every waking hour. That's, that's the, the thing I would, I would say, if, if you, particularly if you're starting a company. Well, first of all, I'd say I actually think I, I, think I feel, feel fear quite strongly. Um, so it's not as though I just have the absence of fear. I, I feel it quite strongly. Um, 
But there are just times when something is important enough, you believe in it enough, that you, you do it in spite of the fear. If you just, if you just accept the probabilities, um, then that diminishes fear. This guy called Tsiolkovsky, one of the early Russian rocket scientists, the great saying, Earth is the cradle of humanity, but you cannot stay in the cradle forever. It is time to go forth, become a star-faring civilization, be out there among the stars, expand the scope and scale of human consciousness. I, I find that incredibly exciting. Uh, that makes me glad to be alive. I, I hope you feel the same way.